Hi, I'm Deb Sharpie and I'm from DeForest, Wisconsin and I sell Hosta at the Dane County Farmers Market. So you're going to show us uh, some of those, tell us a little bit about the Hostas yeah. and how to plant them. Yeah, they're, they're so easy to care for and they're so rewarding. There's so many different colors and shapes and sizes so we can look at that. Perfect. And I can show you two of the most popular ones, mature ones over here right. and it's hard for people to imagine when they buy something that's in a small pot that it's going to get as big as they actually do. It's what you would refer to as a clump. There's probably three good sized clumps here, and each clump could probably be divided into maybe 25 plants. But what you, if you went to your garden center or the farmer's market and were to buy this variety, it's going to look like this when you buy it. So you can see the leaves are a lot smaller on this plant. This is a juvenile plant, this is a mature plant. No, is that what you're holding? Is that like Yes, and you can see in this, there's probably four or five plants, right, in this clump here. So this is going to mature pretty fast. In, in probably two or three years, you can get something like this if it has enough water and the right environment. Mm -hmm. It is. Let me just show it to you. Like, look at the size of that leaf. And this is what we do. <laughs> oh, this leaf is going to get potentially larger. It can get larger, yes, yeah, during the year. It might be a couple more inches each way. And uh, as one of my friends says, these are the kind of leaves that you pass bird bags out of. <laughs> <laughs> so, and you can see that this one is taking on a little bit of a gold tone here. And this particular variety, given more sun during the year, will get on a will take on a very nice gold tone, and it will look golden. It almost looks like it's glowing. It's called a blue angel. Now that's also very popular in hot so it has large leaves also, but it prefers much more shade. Because like, the blue houses are bluer because they have a wax on the leaf. So if they're in the sun, that will deteriorate. So it needs to, to stay in more shade to keep that nice wax on it, to keep that nice color. So how we get with that is about the things that you give us to Now, houses are, are real fussy. I think a major misconception is that they want deep, dark shade, and they don't. They need some sunlight. So the sunlight that you may want to avoid is the sunlight like from maybe 11 to 2 during the day. Like if they can be located where maybe the shade comes over them during that time. Some, some varieties can actually take sun all day if they're kept moist enough. Okay, so sometimes that makes the difference. Um, as far as what kind of soil, I would say just something that's going to drain well because they don't like to have their feet wet. They like moist soil but not wet soil. And if you have conditions that aren't quite right, what's going to happen is your plant will just mature a little more slowly, but you'll have a nice house. I mean, I've got lots of them in my house, and they don't want to eat them, they just don't cut them. Yes, that's right. They're like this cut up and multiply and, you know. They're so rewarding because they come back every year, and they're good standbys. And the other thing is, too, when they're coming up in the spring, if you want to share one with a friend, you can easily dig them up when they're just small sheets coming up. Split it apart, give a section to your friend, and as your plant grows during the rest of the year, you never know that there was a piece taken away from there. So, and actually, it's why it's called the French Pit Plant, because they're easy to care. Right. Now, this one is maybe, let's say, just in the spring, oh, we have a little visitor there. But I've dug this plant up, and I can see that there is maybe four or five plants in here. And I want to, I want to stick this. Put this elsewhere. So what I can do, I can see these other little plants in here. 
and I have a kitchen knife. This is an old Chicago cutlery knife I've had in the for 15 years. I can put the tip of it down between some of these plants and just give it a nice little snap. Alright, so I just essentially cut it apart like I might do a vegetable or a piece of fruit. And I can tear this apart with my hands. So now you can see I have a piece here, and it's got three nice plants in it, lots of roots. This one has two plants in it, lots of roots. So what I had originally had is one plant is now two. And both of these will take off just fine. So if I wanted to plant it now in the ground, I'm just going to dig my hole out. You can see I've got the dirt loosened. And I want the soil level to be right about where the soil level was here. So I would just put it in the ground. It's simple as covering it up, firming the ground around the plant, and then adding a little water. And you certainly don't have to water this every day. What you can do once you plant it is give it a really good drink. And then if it doesn't rain for a week to ten days, come back and give it another good drink. And it will be just fine. You can walk away and just wait for it to get big like this all the other time. Now, the plant that you can sell this plant, is that typically what you would get at the market? Many times what I'm selling at the market, there are multiple plants in the pot. So, a person, if they wanted to, they could buy a plant and go home and split it in two or three. Yes, and people do that. <laughs> yeah. And this, people really like this one. This is Komodo Dragon, and it has um, an undulating leaf edge. So, you can, that adds a lot to the texture of the plant. And also, look how white. The other side of the leaves are. So on a windy day, you not only have this undulating moving, but you get these little glimpses of a change in color in your garden. Mm -hmm. okay. Let's see. I also like, if we can see them under here, here's one called Thunderbolt. And he's got this nice, um, ed nice center in the leaf with this thick edge around it. And his leaves are also very thick. Which makes it resistant to slugs. Oh, I'm going to be a Well, I, because I've got such a huge monoculture here, have probably more than the average garden would. But um, I can recommend something as a product called Sluggo. And it actually is a micronutrient that the slugs will eat and then it, it, they'll die from it. But when the sluggle degrades, it's just going to add a micronutrient to the soil that it would want anyway. And it doesn't hurt the birds or the chipmunks or any of the little critters that run around. So it's called sluggle. Sluggle. Now this is called Ginsu Knife. And it's very different than most musk because it has almost a serrated edge. Not only does this undulate, but it has it's very uneven on the edges, and of course the color is there too. It has an upright growth habit, so it looks very different. If you were born this next to that Komodo dragon, you'd almost think the two both were impressive, because yeah. they look so different. <laughs> well, it's, it's just a little too early for them to flower yet. A few of them may have started thinking about it. But generally, most of them are going to flower in July, maybe August. But I do want to mention that there are many uh, that have fragrant flowers. And the, the hosta is a member of the lily family. So the ones that have the more fragrant flowers actually smell that nice Easter lily smell. So those are going to flower a little bit later in the year, August, maybe early September. And I have to clean it from those by my front door because they are fragrant. I want to smell them, so I want to be able to walk by and enjoy them every day as I go in and out of the house once they start flowering. If you don't enjoy hosta flowers, there's 
there's no reason that you have to leave them on the They can be, they can be cut off. But I have seen in general that there are many that have flowers that have a lot of coffee. And the other pests that are common to people they can be are deer. Oh. Deer like to eat the hosta. Oh. And what people have found is that they prefer the hosta that have the scented flowers. Okay. And I don't know if that's because there's a higher sugar content in the leaves or there's a fragrance to it. But So if you have a lot of trouble with deer, you might want to shy away from the hosta that have the fragrant flowers. And what do you recommend if that doesn't work for getting rid of the deer? Um, well, I know my little Sheltie keeps deer away. That little dog? Yes, that? just her barking is enough. But okay. um, I, otherwise, there are things you can spray on the plants, but I don't have any actual experience with that. So I hate to recommend anything besides getting a small dog. Okay, so your recommendation would be get a small dog. Yes, yes. <laughs> all right. So now you've got how many varieties of wild fruit trees? I've got almost a thousand. Um, maybe, I want to say about 125, maybe. And where's your interest in wild um, I've always been interested in plants, and actually my mother had high stuff when I was growing up, so that helped encourage me. And the other thing that once I got to know a little bit about high stuff, it's just so genetically unstable. And that's why we have so many different kinds and colors and forms. So there's always something new that new things happen in the garden, and they're not possible.